this lesson is uh, today is about um, the production quantity model. It's continuation of our uh, inventory management uh, group of lessons. And today we're we're going to talk about uh, in, in the next few lessons in, in three three different parts. We're going to talk first about the production quantity model, and then uh, later about the quantity discount model. And we're going to have examples <coughs> of all of all of these um, as we as we go forward here. All right, so let's get into the pro production quantity model. You'll remember that these are our assumptions for the economic order quantity model. There's going to be uh, one significant, only one change, much like we did with our uh, queuing, where we only changed one thing. We only went from a single server to a multiple server. In this case, the only thing that's going to change is we're not going to have deliveries. That's going to be uh, out of the case. And we're going to change uh, instantaneous replenishment. We're not going to have that because, as the name implies, P, the P is production. We are going to be producing items as, at the same time that we're consuming them. So that's going to change only those things because we don't have a supplier. And, the, and we'll be producing at the same time uh, that we are consuming these inventory items. So that's the production quantity model. And here's the, here's the summary of those. Um, everything, demand is known and constant. Replenishment occurs at a constant rate. So our production is never interrupted. It's constant. And at the, it occurs at the same time that we're consuming. The purchase price is remains constant, holding cost, ordering cost, and no stockouts are allowed, just as with the EOQ. But again, this is the production quantity model. And the key thing is to recognize, again, that we're producing uh, at the same time that we're uh, consuming. Again, to re-emphasize, we're going to do relax or do away with the instantaneous replenishment because we're simultaneously manufacturing and consuming. And what we're going to see is the inventory builds up gradually and not instantaneously. We're going to see how this works on our graph here on the next slide. So let's suppose again we want to determine it's a, again this is a, a continuous a continuous review situation where we know uh, every uh, the items that are on contend, continuous uh, let, me, let me start this over I need to type this this is still a continuous review inventory system but still a continuous review system but we're going to start with, we, we, again, we're going to assume that we've ordered a certain, uh, a certain quantity. But now, instead of uh, having them received all at once, at times zero, we're going to, be, to begin producing these items. And so there's two processes that are going on. We're going to begin consuming items. And then at the same time, and again, this is not going to not going to be the scale, but at the same time, there our inventory is actually increasing up to a point where the where the uh, where we have produced all of the items uh, that we're going to uh, produce for that order, and then at and then our inventory then decreases down until we hit zero. And this is what we're going to see on the other slide, what this looks like. So we are, uh, even though this looks like a solid line, and I apologize for that, this should be a, this should be a dot line because that's, 
we're producing inventory. And so actually we're starting at zero and gradually, gradually increasing our inventory on hand until we reach this point. And this point is the point where we have produced all that we've ordered. And then at that point, we begin to consume, we stop production and we begin to consume all the way until we reach zero. And this point at which we uh, have, have produced all that we ordered, that's called the production period or production time, the time of production. And so then once we hit zero, then we'll place another order. We'll begin to produce until we reach till we reach our order point and then we consume and so this cycle continues uh, throughout our our process so there, these these red air red lines solid lines are the period of the production where we're producing but again our inventory is increasing and then it decreases to zero. Then we start producing again. And then, then we consume, start producing, et cetera, et cetera. Now, um, we've already mentioned that the production period is that period in which we reach this point, the apex, if you will. And we're going to call this value Q max. So in other words, this is the maximum number of items that we're going to have on hand at any at any point in time. And we're going to talk about that in a simple example here in a few minutes in this next slide. So here's how this here's how this is going to operate. Um, we're given this information that our order quantity is 200 items. Our annual demand capital D is 12,000 items. Our daily production rate is 100, and the firm operates for 300 days a year. So the first thing that we want to do is to determine our D, which is our uh, daily demand. And the way that we're going to do this is that we're going to take our annual demand, capital D, and that's going to be divided by our operating days are 300. And uh, I've chosen that the arithmetic is, is fairly easy. So this is going to be 12,000 divided by 300. So we're, it's a constant uh, consumption rate. And again, if you do the arithmetic uh, quickly, this equals to daily demand is 40 items so 40 items over 300 years means that 300 days means that we'll consume 12,000 uh, units in that year right. so now we know that our daily demand is 40 40 units Okay, so how does this how does this look? So we're going to build a little chart, and our chart's going to be for day for uh, we're going to uh, we're going to be able to um, for the days of production. Here's day one. We're going to know what we're what what our starting. Um, in fact, let me uh, erase this. Start over because. What we what we want to know is our daily demand is going to be 40 units. Uh, we want to be able to have our starting starting quantity, starting amount. We want to then be able to know um, the daily uh, production. Then we also want to know our demand for each day and we want to know our sorry it's right in the right place ending inventory and 
this is our going to be and so I've written written them out but this is actually the uh, the, the starting inventory and we're going to have uh, for a number of our number of days for day one and so if we look at our, our graph on day one what's our starting inventory and hopefully you'll see that our starting inventory is zero and then on day one how many will we produce we'll produce a hundred what's our demand and we know our daily demand is 40 and so what's the ending inventory well it's a hundred minus that 40 or 60 items and so this is this is our this is our day day number of days day one now day two what's our starting inventory well it's 60. What are we producing? We'll produce 100. What's our demand? 40. And now what's our inventory? And so now it's 160 minus that 40 that's consumed. It's 100. We started with 60. We produced 100. We, we said 40, so now we have 120 on hand. Now we begin day three. We go through the same process. What's the starting inventory is 120. What's production? I want you to think about for that for a minute. Well, the production on day three is actually Why is that? Now, there's a little, I think there's an electrical storm, so there may have been a little interruption. But we we've, we've, do not produce on day three because we've produced 200, which is exactly the quantity that we ordered. So we stop production. And beginning on day three, we only will have demand. So now the demand is the same, it's constant. And so if we start with 120 and we uh, consume or sell 40, now we're gonna have 80 on hand. And then day four, we have 80 on hand. How many are we gonna produce on day four? Well, the answer again is zero because we've already produced 100. And now Notice now what we've done at day three, we're at this point of the curve where the, we've reached our maximum value. We've climbed up this curve day one and day two, and now day three, we're starting to go down, down that curve. So the demand is 40, and now we'll have 40 on hand. And then hopefully you can see the pattern. Day five, we we start with 40 on hand. Oop, that's 40. We're not producing on day five. We consume 40, and our ending demand, ending inventory is zero, as we would expect. And now we're down at this point on our curve, and we've completed completed one cycle. And then on day six, we're just going to repeat this same process as we've done for day one. We'll produce 100, we'll consume 40, and we'll have 60 on hand. So this is how this process uh, unfolds. Okay, so now the question you need to ask yourself is, and we've, we've already really answered it. What's the production period? And if you'll see, the production period is, in our example, is two days. But if we didn't build the table, how would we know what our production period is? Can you, can you think through that logically? Well, hopefully you've seen how did we determine our order our order period excuse me our production period was two days because we produced 100 each day 
if you, hopefully you can think through that, that's going to be our order quantity divided by our daily production rate, how many we're going to produce each day. And so this, in our example, in our simple example, that's 200 divided by 100 for two days. So that's if we weren't, if we didn't weren't, didn't build the graph and we just had the starting information, that's how we would develop that. Now the last question is, what's this value of Qmax? What's the maximum inventory on hand? Even though we've ordered 200, what's the maximum inventory that we have on hand? And that you're going to look in this column, the inven ending inventory, and choose the maximum number. And of course, in, this, in our example, our Qmax maximum inventory on hand is 200. Excuse me, 120. Our maximum inventory is, is 120. All right, so let's think about how we would calculate that if we actually if we didn't have this chart. And I'm going to erase this. And let's talk about let's talk about then uh, Qmax. All right, so let's look at our. I know that our daily. Um, demand is 40 and our daily production is 100. So of those 100, 40 are consumed. And if and what that means is 0.4 in this case, Point point four, if you will, is the demand is the demand rate. Forty percent of what we produce is consumed each day. So if forty percent is our demand rate, then you need to ask yourself the question, what's the shelf rate or what's the what's the amount that's not consumed or a percent that's not 90 that's a percent uh, percent to inventory what percentage of our production items goes into that inventory well well that's going to clearly be one minus our demand rate or one minus Point four, and so each day, 60% of what we produce goes onto the shelf, which is one minus this demand rate. So mathematically, let's look at this. What is this? What's this value? 40 in terms of our variable now. This is uh, the demand. D over P. And so if this is D over P, then this is 1 minus D over P. Every, and, and which in our in our example is 60%. And if this is the rate that goes of, of uh, percent that goes into the inventory and we've ordered Q, then we can find our Q max by doing this multiplication Q times 1 minus D over P equals Q max. And of course, this is in our simple example, that's 200. And we've already done this arithmetic up here, so this is 200 times 0.6, and of course that is going to be our 120. That was our Q, Q max as we saw in our chart. 
Right. The last thing I want you to consider it before we go to our before we go to our next is the following. Remember, how did we calculate the average inventory on hand? And again, it's going to be the same process. It's going to be one half. And let me erase this. It's going to be one half times the maximum amount of inventory that we have on hand. And so what in this case, it's one half of Q max. And of course, that's going to be this uh, Q times one minus D over P divided all of that divided by two. Okay, that's going to be our average inventory on hand. The last point I want to make, and this is a point that's going to be sim similar to what we talked about with our um, uh, queuing models about the relationship between our daily production rate and our daily demand rate. What has to be the relationship between the daily production rate and the daily demand rate? Is it uh, less than, is it equal to, or is it greater than? Hopefully you're able to, to think through, and much like our um, queuing model, the daily production rate must always be greater than the demand rate because if that were not true, we would never get anything onto the shelf. We have to produce more than is demanded. So P, the daily production rate, that's lowercase, is always greater than our daily demand rate. All right, let's look at our model. And again, much like before, we've got our known quantities, we've got the um, the annual annual demand. We've got our daily daily demand, our daily production rate, cost of um, ordering, cost of carrying carrying cost, and the unknown. The variable that we're searching for is this optimal order quantity, so that we minimize that the our total annual inventory cost is as small as possible. And like before, this this purchase price is going to be the same. It's the number, it's the annual demand times the purchase price. It's a capital P, not lowercase. The ordering cost looks exactly the same because we're going to take whatever that, the number of orders that we place is going to be our annual demand divided by the quantity. And we're going to multiply that by the ordering cost. And then the carrying cost is the average quantity, which again, this is Q max over two times that carrying cost. So this is the annual carrying cost is the only term that's different. And it's a function of this. Uh, the only change is the fact that this is the uh, um, Q max is the largest amount on hand. And then we've talked about the production period and the maximum quantity on hand. And as before, we're, we're not, we're going to discount this because we're not, this has no term, no Q term in it, no term in the order quantity. And we want to solve. And we know that this term, when this term and this term are equal, that's when the cost curve is at its, at its minimum. So we set those two equal to each other. We do a little algebra like we did before. We solve for Q. And this is of the same form for the production quantity model, except that this denominator is multiplied by the term 1 minus D over P. And so that determines our optimal order quantity. And on the next video, 
we're going to see how we apply this and how we're going to solve a, a, an example problem uh, using the production quantity model. And again, I don't, I don't expect you to memorize uh, th this formula. Uh, I don't have it memorized myself, but everything is going to be open book and open notes. And, uh, and I don't expect you to derive this. It's just a matter if you're, those of you who are interested about how this, where this came from, that's the process that's used. And so, uh, again, as always, if you have any questions, please let me know. Please feel free to contact me.